All right, we're here at my indoor vermi hut worm tower, and we've got one little item here that we're gonna get back to. And today we're gonna talk about how often you should feed your worm bin, but it also helps to talk about how much you should feed your worm bin. And then we're also gonna set up for the last feeding in this tray before we rotate. And I do that just a little bit differently than all my other feedings that I do before we rotate. And the castings are looking pretty good here. We just have some of these pieces of of shredded cardboard and when we feed we're going to show you how we kind of take care of those now this is going to go down for about 60 days before it gets harvested so things are looking really good in here now as I scoop some of the top layer here I am seeing lots of worms so that's great and when we first open this up you can see a divot right through here now on top of the area that we fed we had put a top feeding on there and before we get too far I want to show you about how fast the worms can eat by showing you how fast they ate that top feeding. So pretty cool. You saw that they had most of the food gone by about a week and then after three weeks there was really nothing to see. And that's despite the huge feeding that we had under here. Now one of the things I wanted to see how fast they ate was the peanuts. And they were boiled peanuts that I then rinsed and check it out. They are still there in pieces. I broke some of them up and right here you saw that worm that was in there but there's also a few mites and I think inside we are still seeing the peanut. So mites are little bin helpers that kind of help shred the food up for the worms to eat. And that's one of the things I want to talk about. Now, when you first have a brand new bin, you're going to have lots of bedding and just a very little food, and you're actually going to need to feed it more often. And that's because there's not all these bin critters or microbes built up, and the worms really need those microbes, especially in order to eat their food. And as we go down here, I'm seeing even more peanut butter shell, or sorry, peanut shells, and yep, they are going to be a around for a long time. But as we dig deeper, we are seeing that they pretty much obliterated that feeding zone. In fact, let's talk about what they ate and what we fed them. First, we added a big celery stalk. Then we put in a broccoli stem, watermelon slice, and a lettuce stalk. We followed that up with a piece of yellow watermelon, a pear core, pepper top, and an orange peel. Then we topped it off with a raspberry top and a piece of cucumber. Finally, we put in boiled peanuts that were also frozen and thawed like all my other food scraps. And of course, we finished up with our amendments of worm chow, used coffee grounds, and eggshell grit. So I'm sure they are in here just kind of eating the residuals. And when you have an older bin like this, this Burmy Hut has been running for almost four years. It has a very well-balanced ecosystem. There's microbes all throughout it. And you really don't need to feed it as often as you do a newer bin because you can feed it more. You can put more food scraps in it and the microbes and the mites and everybody's attacking it. And it's not going to sit there and get anaerobic and rot but in a newer bin you don't have that so you need to just put small small feedings in there and you need to do it maybe every five to seven days as you continue to build up the food because you see that they have eaten everything you can give them more and more and then you can start feeding them maybe at the 10 day interval and check it out lots of great worms here we've got a little baby right there we've got one on my finger oh fantastic worms this bin is just really running on all cylinders in fact, I think it's only been fed two or three times in the about 60 days that we've had it. And you can see, I mean, between the rotation system where I inoculate the bedding and how quickly the worms get to it and pulverize the food, I mean, you have castings so quickly. In fact, last video that we did with this worm bin, I showed you why I think a worm tower is the absolute best bin to get started. You can certainly start with other bins, and you've seen me do that. In fact, I have a new micro bin, but a worm tower just helps you get everything going. So what we're going to do is dig around here this side and mix it up a little bit just to see what else we're dealing with here. 
that right there is going to take a while. I think, again, that's from a broccoli stem. But once we get everything mixed up, we're going to put our trough in and we are going to give them their last feeding. And I'll show you how I do it just a little differently. So yeah, just like that. I'm pretty happy with the size that we have here. I probably could have put in more bedding as we went to kind of bulk it up and maybe even a little bit more food. But this is going to be great. It will go down just a little bit in the next 60 days while the worms are finishing everything up. But we've got a good situation right here. But I actually dug down too deep because this time we are not going to add bedding. And normally I add bedding with every feeding, but because we know this is the last feeding before we harvest this, we're not going to do that. And speaking of bedding, remember that thing that I took out? This was kind of the piece of paper that is put down in a raspberry plastic container that they have. And the worms have showed me that it is not biodegradable. In fact, it feels like it's got a plastic layer and then maybe some kind of paper layer to help absorb in between but just an odd material but now you know and I know you don't need to put it in a worm bin so here are some of the things we had in mind to feed we've got some fast and slow food they eat out the center pretty quick but then as you saw this broccoli stock outer piece is going to be there for a while watermelon that is going to be no trace or sign of that when we come to harvest and neither is this lettuce stock or these carrots right there they've been really good worms so we're going to give them even more We'll give them a bunch more watermelon as well, again, because they've got 60 days to eat all of this. <laughs> and we'll put a little bit more green mush in here. Now, when we come back in 60 days, if some of this stuff is left over, it'll be in bigger pieces, and I will just pull it out and put it on the new top feeding tray. Okay, I can't resist. Just a little bit more, and then we'll get this junk off my hands, just like that. You couldn't resist, huh? <laughs> no. So next, we're going to put in some of my worm chow that I blend up in my Magic Bullet blender. And all this is is expired grains within my pantry. I just try and get some that don't have extra salt content. And then it goes right inside. You don't want to use too much because they could get something called protein poisoning. Seems odd because this seems like carbohydrates, but go ahead and look it up. And then we'll go in with some eggshell grit. This is something that the worms always attack when I do my different top feedings. It seems like the first thing they eat. They use it in their gizzard to break break up the food into smaller pieces. And then finally, we're gonna go in with a bunch of coffee. Again, I'm not really gonna check on this for 60 days, so I have a feeling they're gonna have no problems with this whatsoever because of the very small, tiny nature of the particles of coffee. So there is our last feeding, totally devoid of any kind of bedding because we're gonna let them eat up this tiny shredded cardboard in here and check it out. I mean, that is a super small piece because of the awesome shredders that I use and actually I say shredders because my mom also shreds cardboard for me. So despite how small that shredded cardboard is, when it's brand new, the worms really aren't going to eat on it too much. They need those microbes, which is why you need to continue to feed those worms, you know, in very small amounts, but pretty often because they're not going to be able to eat that bedding right away. But after a few months, this bedding just gets broken down by the microbes and the worms can chew at it and eat it up. They don't have teeth, but they are able to ingest it and turn it into castings when you have a very good built up microbial bin. So if you just got yourself a new vermi hut or you've started a worm bin, keep those small, more often feedings going. Keep checking on them every five to seven days. Make sure you're giving them very small feedings and if they leave you any food, then don't necessarily increase it until you see them not leave you any food. And then you can slowly give them more and more. Then as you give them more and more, start stretching out the days that you feed them until you get to a point like this where I can go two to three weeks with giving them a pretty large feeding right there. So if you want to see how I start my worm bins and the very little amount of food that we start off with at first, check out this video right here. And you can check out any of my more recent videos to see kind of the big massive feedings that you see me give in almost all my worm bins. So I hope you're having a great day. I hope your worm bins are doing fantastic. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.